Welcome everyone. Sorry for the long break. I was having a very, very, very stressful time over the summer and the other months. But yeah, um, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna be doing a read out loud. Just so you know, um, this is not kid friendly. The reason I'm doing this is because I can. It's called The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. Warning, this is not for minors. Even though I am one, just don't read to them at night. It will give them a little shaken up. Anyways, let's get started. The hole in noise. The first thing you find out when your dog learns to walk, nope, learns to talk, is that dogs don't got nothing much to say. Need a poo, Todd? Shut up, Manchi. Poo, poo, Todd. I said shut it. We're walking across the wild fields of south, southeast of town. Those ones that slope down the, to the river and head towards the swamp. Ben sent me to pick him to pick him some swamp apples and he made me take Manchi with me. Even though we all know Killin Sillin I don't know how to pronounce that only bought him to stay on Mayor's Prentice's good side. And so suddenly here's the brand new dog as the present for my birthday last year when I never said I wanted any dog. That's what I said. I wanted, what I wanted was for Killen to finally he fixed the fish, fictional bike so I wouldn't have to walk every forsaken place in this stupid town. But oh no, happy birthday, Todd. Here's a brand new puppy, Todd. Even though you don't want him, even though you never asked for him, guess who has to feed him, train him, and wash him, and take care of him, and take him out for walks, and listen to him jabber now. He's got old enough for the talking germs to set his mouth moving. Guess who? Poo, Manji sparks quietly to himself. Poo, poo, poo. Just have your stupid poo and quit, quit yapping about it. I take a sw switch of grass from beside the trail and I swat after him with it. I don't need to reach him. I don't mean to reach him. But he just laughs, his little barking laughs and carries on down the trail. I follow after him. Switching the switch against the grass on either side, squinting from the sun, trying not to think about nothing at all. We don't need apples from the swamp. Truth be told, Ben can buy them at Mr. Phelps' store. If he really wants to, wants them. Also true. Also true. Going to the swamp to pick a few apples is not a job for a man. For a man, because men are never allowed to be so idle. Now I won't be, I won't officially become a man for thirty more days. I live till I live twelve years of thirteen long months each, and each another and another twelve months beside. Besides, all of which means I'm still one month away from my from the big birthday. The plans are being planned. The per person I don't know how to say that word are being prepared. It will be a party, I guess. Though I'm starting to get some strange pictures about it all all dark and too bright at the exact same time. But nevertheless, 
I will become a man and start picking apples in the swamp. This is not a job for a man or even almost a man. But Ben knows he can ask me to go and he knows I'll say yes to going because the swamp is the only place anywhere where a presentish town where you can have half a break from the noises that man spill out of his out of their selves all their clamor and clatter that never lets up even when they they sleep men and all their thoughts they don't know they d they think ever even when everyone can hear them men and their noise i don't know how to say how do they do it how they stand each other men are noisy creatures didn't spell creatures right squirrel manji shouts and off he goes jumping off the trail no matter how much i yell it after him and i often have to go have to go to across i look around to make sure i'm alone god damn fields because killin no have a fit man cheese fall down some from uh, it will be my own goddamn fault even though i never wanted a goddamn dog in the goddamn first place manchi get back here squirrel i have to kick my way through the grass getting grub bits and st stuck in my shoe one smashes as i kick it off leaving green smears across my sneakers which i know from experience ain't coming out manchi's I rage. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. He's barking around the tree, and the squirrel skitters back and forth the tree trunk. Taunting him. Come on, whirly dog, it says. Noise. Come on. Get it. Come on. Get. Come get. Whirly, whirly, whirly. Squirrel, tot, squirrel. Goddamn animals are stupid. I grab Manchies by the collar and hit him hard across the back leg ow todd ow i hit him again and again ow todd come on i say my own noise raging so loud i can barely hear myself think which is something i'm about to regret you watch really boy really boy thinks the squirrel at me thinks the squirrel at me come get your whirly boy you can get him off too i say hey, except i don't say if i say if stands for i say what f stands for and i really really should have looked around again Cause here's Aaron right here, raising out of the grass from nowhere and rising up and smacking me across the face, scratching my lips with his big ring, bringing his hands back the other way, closed fist, catching my cheekbone, but at least missing my nose because I am fa falling into the grass trying to fall away from his punch. And I let go of a man of Manchi's collar, and off he runs. Back to the squirrel, barking his head off. The traitor and I hit the grass with my knees and hands getting grumpled in stains or even stains all all over everything. And I stay there on the ground, breathing. Aaron stands over me, his no noise coming at me in fragments of a scripture and his next sermon, language, young Todd, and finding of a good of a sacrifice and the saint Jesus is back 
and God hears, and wash the pictures, that's everyone's noise. Of familiar glancing, flashes of what, what the forsaken? But up flies a loud bit of his sermon to block it out. And I look up into his eyes and suddenly I don't want to know. I can already taste the blood where his ring was cut on my lip. And I don't want to know. He never comes out here. Men never do. They have their reasons, men do. And it's just me and my dog. Only ever, but here he is. I don't, don't don't want to know. He smiles down at me. Through the bread of his smiles, down at me in the grass, at smiling first. Language, young Todd, he says, binds us like prisoners on a chain. Haven't you learned anything from your church, boy? Then he says, most familiarly preaching. If one of us fall, we all fall. Yes, Aaron, I think. With your mouth, Todd. Yes, Aaron, I say. And the if, 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 I don't know how to say that. And the GDs, because I don't think I didn't hear them as well. Your noise reveals you, reveals all of us. Not all I think of about think but at the same time i say sorry aaron he leans down to me his lips close to my face and i can smell the breath that comes out of his mouth the smell of weight of the smell of the weight of it like his fingers are grabbing onto me god hears he whispers god hears he raises his a hand and i flinch but he laughs, and then he's gone. Like that, I'm heading back towards the town, taking the noise with him. I'm shaking from the charge of my blood and being hit, shaking from being fired up, and so surprised and so angry and so much hating, hating this town and the men in it. That it takes me a while till... I can get up and go get my dog again. What was he ifing about doing out here anyway? I think I'm so hacked off, so, so raging and with anger and hate and fear. Yes, fear. Shut up. That I don't even look around to see if Aaron heard my noise. I don't look around. I don't look around and then I do look around and I go get my dog Aaron Todd Aaron don't say that name again Manchi bleeding Todd 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 bleeding I know shut up earlier he says as if I don't mean nothing his head is as empty as the sky I smack his rump don't say that either ow Todd out todd we keep walking staying clear over the river on our left it runs down through a series of gulches at the east of the downside of town till the flatness into our mar marshy pa part that eventually becomes swamp you have to avoid the river especially the marshy part before the swamp tree because that's where the crocs live easily big enough to kill an almost man and his dog the fins on their back look like rows of rushes and if you get too close whoom out of the water they come flying with their claws grasping their mouth snapping and you pretty much ain't got no chance at there at all we get ourselves down past the marshy part, and I try to take the swamp quiet approachless. There's nothing to see down here. No more, really, which is why men don't come. And the smell, too. I don't pretend I don't smell, but I don't nearly smell as bad as then. 
so bad as men make out. That's, don't take that as a context, please, just don't. They're smelling their memories, they are, they're not smelling. What's really here? They're smelling it like it was then. All the dead things, spark, spacks, and men and had different ideas of brutal, brutally. Spax used the swamp to throw their dead right into the water, let them sink, which is, was fine because they were suited for the swamp burial, I guess. That's what Ben says. Water and muck and sparkles skin worked fine together. Didn't poison nothing. Just made the swamp richer like men do to soil. Then suddenly, of course, there were a whole lot more sp Spacks to bury the normal. Too many for even a swamp. This big to sh swallow and ruddy big swamp, too. And then there were no lib spacks at all? Were there? Just spack bodies in heaps piling up in the swamp and rotting and sinking into the and it took a long time for the swamps to become swamp, swamp again. And not just a mess of flies and smell and who knows what extra germs they kept saved up for us. I was born into it all. That all that mess, overcrowded swamp and overcrowded cemetery and the not crowded enough town. I don't remember nothing. Don't remember a world without noise. My pa died of sickness before I was born. Then my ma died, of course. No surprise there. Ben and Killian look, took me in, raised me. Ben says ma was the last woman, but everyone says that about ma. Ben may not be lying. He believes it's true, you know. I am the youngest of the whole town, though. I used to overcome and throw rocks across the field where Fredge Oliver, seven months and eight days older, Liam Smith, four months and ten, 29 days older, and Seb Mundy, who was the next youngest to me, three months and a day older than me. But even he don't talk to me no more. That's, he. now that he's a man, no boys do once return, no boys do once return 13, which is how they go into present town. Boys become men, and then they go to their men only meetings to talk about who knows what boys do. Who knows, and boys most definitely ain't allowed if you're the last boy in town, you just have to wait by yourself. Well, and a dog you don't want to, you don't want, but never mind. He's here's the swamp. We go sticking to the path and round us the worst water rate weaving our bodies. The bulbing trees grow up and out of the bog. Nearly the roof yards and yards up. The air thick and it's dark and heav it's heavy. But it's not frightening. Kind of thick and dark and heavy. There's lots of life here. Tons of it. Just ignoring the town. As you please. Birds and green snakes and frogs and kivits and both kinds of squirrels. And I promise you, a cast or, or two. And sure, the red snakes, there's red snakes to watch out for, but even though it's stark, there's slashes of light coming that come from holes. The, in the roof. And if you ask me which guaranteed, you may not be too to me, the swamp is like one big, comfy, not very noisy room. Dark but living, living but friendly, friendly but not graspy. 
Manchis lifts his leg practically on everything till he must be running out of pee. And then he heads off under the bush, burbling to himself, finding a place to do his other business, I guess. But the swamp don't mind. How could it? It's just a small, it's just life going over itself, turning and cycling and eating itself. To grow, I mean, it's not that noisy here. Sure, it's, sure it is, there's no escaping noise, not nowhere, but at all, but it's quieter than the town and the loud difference of kinds of loud. That's where we're going to be ending off. I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.